easiest ways to buy anything online from any corner of the globe. With Zajax.com, you can have the whole world at your home, in the safest way. Even if you have no shipping address in the USA, Zajax gives you your own unique US address where you can get your product shipped. And no worries if you don't want to pay via your credit card. They can buy the products for you on their cards, pay locally, and get internationally. Zajax has made online buying safe, fast, easy. Moreover, if you don't trust online purchases, you can deposit the payment in the bank. Zajax collects all your products internationally at one place while you sit back and relax. It is not just your buying partner, it has other services too. Be it shopping, shipping, transportation, inspection, sea freight, courier express, or pickup request, we can do it all. Plus, First impression is that this video does a great job of telling the user exactly what they can do through your site and what the added values are for them. So if they don't trust um, online merchants, they don't need to pay with their own credit card. Great. Um, some things I notice is that in the video it references Zajax and um, up here and in the URL um, it does all say Zajax and then it says Zajel Express and so I assume Zajax is Zajel Express. It's like a you just combine them. Um, having two names might be confusing for some users especially if you're getting a lot of web traffic from other sources or you're expecting any sort of like word of mouth um, marketing especially in um, some parts of the site you reference one name and in others like the video you reference another. Um, the next thing I noticed was that you have a typo here. It says client reviews and then it says what client are saying. It should be what clients are saying. Little things like that um, are pretty off-putting to users. It Users tend to think of sites that have small typos like this or language errors as being less legitim legitimate, especially if um, the market you are aiming for are U.S. customers. Yeah, and again here you just miss a plural uh, where it should be clients. Join. And again, here there should be a space, should be up space too. So far, very simple. Oh, right here, um, where uh, on this membership button, you're missing a, a letter. You're missing the letter H. <laughs> uh, again, stuff like that, just typos throughout the website are going to make your site and thus your service and your business seem a lot less professional. It certainly looks less polished.
So it's not immediately obvious how I would actually buy them a pack. Okay, because these are a good way to make sure they have the correct number. Okay, so you paste in the URL, the item number, item name, okay, my item, let's see. This is a bad product, but it's not immediately obvious where I would find the item number. Just looking on one of the most popular online retailers, Amazon.com, it was very difficult to find an item number or any other thing. Let's see if I can search product details. This one. I'm not sure if that's the right number. So I went to place my order. I don't know what I'm doing here. Drawing our sequel syntax. Check the manual that corresponds to your mind. Let's try again. I was reading your SQL syntax to see what the problem was. Yeah, your checkout isn't working. So that's obviously a major issue. You want users to be able to give you money for the service that you're providing. Another thing is just through this order process, it's very tedious and the benefits of using your website in that it might be good for someone who doesn't have a US address, 
or someone who doesn't want to use their credit card on a website like Amazon or another online retailer, but the process of um, going through, putting in all that information, finding it on the page of the website that's selling the product, um, and having to copy and paste or type it all in here is very tedious. I foresee that being a big barrier for users to go through using your site to buy um, any sort of smaller item. It might be worth it if you're buying a, a vehicle or a yacht or something, some sort of like heavy material, but it's certainly for your everyday purchases. I can't imagine the, the user base that's paying a premium to then sort of do all of this extra work, especially when um, there are other ways to to sort of accomplish the the action that the user is trying to accomplish on your site, which is uh, buy something and maybe just don't have to use my own credit card. There are certainly enough enough other alternate payment options that don't involve just typing your credit card information into a website where the amount of time a user is spending on this page and then type the next page not work. Um, yeah, but, all right, let's see. Okay, request now. Okay, so I go through putting in the addresses and the type of site it is. Hmm. Items to be shipped. Okay. okay, so here where it asks for URL, I'm curious if I just leave it blank. Oh, I missed that. This one is a field. Okay, so what if there is no URL? It seems like this is a mandatory field, but especially if someone's paying for transportation, they might not have the URL of the item, or there might not be a URL of the item. It seems like you, it seems like there's not actually any backend validation of whether the URL is um, it, it, whether the URL works, whether um, phone numbers and addresses match up. I know for the the ship to address, I put in an address that I knew was that I knew didn't exist, um, but your system still took it. It doesn't really seem like there's any any backend validation happening of the information that the user puts in, and it definitely for something like uh, shipping or freight or even when you're 
just shipping an item that someone wants to buy off a website like Amazon, you want there to be some back-end validation so that you know people aren't just putting in, um, so you know it's not a typo, someone typed in the wrong zip code. At the very least, um, you should validate for like phone numbers being the correct amount of digits, uh, zip codes being the correct amount of digits, addresses being true addresses that you can actually ship something to. Um, and just the sort of basic stuff like that, obviously it's very difficult to validate uh, personal information that someone puts in, like a, a name or um, a phone number beyond the number of digits, but certainly um, you can do, valid. There, like there are measures that you can enact to validate for addresses and to do basic things, especially if you're running all your backend on SQL, you can certainly validate that the zip code is five characters and a, a phone number is 10 characters. Just simple stuff like that to prevent users from being able to make those kinds of mistakes because at the end of the day, they're paying for a service through your site. And if your site allows them to make this kind of mistake, they aren't going to um, take that and just say like, oh, well, that was that was my mistake. I put in the wrong thing. Like everyone expects there to be back end validation. Um, and so you should certainly either put that in or at the very least put some sort of um, added confirmation button where someone clicks add and a little message pops up and says, are you sure all of the like, please double check all of your information that the phone number and address are correct. Like this is what you put in. Does this look right? I know a lot of sites use that as validation as opposed to having a, um, a database like a hard-coded validation for string length, but let's see, save. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure how I would pay this table cool so this part is very confusing I'm not I'm not actually sure how I would pay to have this yeah so I filled out all this information and the other page when I was trying to have something shipped from Amazon, it seemed like I was headed towards a checkout page before I hit that error page. But with this, I'm not sure how I would even pay you. I'm not sure how I would even pay you to get to finish this transaction. I think a user's gonna get to this point and they're either going to call your call center and and be pretty confused or they're just going to give up and look for another site there doesn't seem to be a really obvious way yeah, there doesn't really seem to be an obvious way to complete complete this transaction yeah, you definitely want to make this more obvious where there is some sort of like complete your order button or checkout. Most users, when you're on a site that's selling a good or service, checkout is the expected button once you've put something into a like a cart page. And so filling out this information about the item that was supposed to be shipped and where it was gonna be picked up, um, what day and all your contact information, the expected next step is to pay and to handle any more intricate logistics than date and place and item to be picked up. Um, so definitely work on that. Overall, the main things that need to be fixed are um, to go through and double check for grammar, spelling, um, sentence structure, all of your copy all of your buttons. I noticed several typos that I pointed out along the way. Um, the other big issue was the 
this sort of checkout process for ordering an item from an online site. I tried to order um, a few things through Amazon. The first was that it was actually very difficult to find some of the information you require to complete a transaction on your site, like the um, product number and all that other stuff. It's, it's not very intuitive once you leave your site where you're going to find that on the page. So the process is a little slow. If you can make it more intuitive or have an autofill where once someone copy like puts in the the URL once they complete that field the rest of it should auto populate that is going to increase your conversion significantly because the more people have to type the longer the process takes the less likely they're going to get to check out and then when I did try to actually check out I hit an error page where you had some um, back end syntax errors um, that made it impossible to finish checkout. So definitely look into that, fix whatever's going on back there so you can get through the entire process of making a purchase. And then for freight and shipping, um, you just wanna make it a significantly more intuitive, easier, um, more sort of effortless for a user to get to the end stage. So I'm sort of stuck at this page. I don't really know where to go from here. Um, I don't know whether I should expect someone to show up at this address that the data I put in, even though I haven't paid for anything. Um, I haven't put in any payment information in my profile, so there's no way for me to even assume that it would that I would be sort of automatically charged once I got to this point. Um, so, I, as it stands now, there's I haven't found a way for a user to actually make a purchase through your site. Um, which is pretty frustrating. Um, aesthetically, the site looks nice. Um, you have like a good color, color scheme. There are photos, all of your buttons, um, aside from the like going to checkout and all that stuff, like most of your buttons seem to work fine. Um, you're very consistent with the color and the font, which is great, but it doesn't really matter like how great your stock photos are. if a user can't make a purchase. Um, so that concludes our test for today. Definitely let me know if once you make these changes you want uh, me to go through and test again. I'd be happy to.